This week I was scammed when researching one shady token. I lost all BNB on one of my MetaMask wallets. And I know you have probably wondering how this guy who understands crypto could get scammed. Well, let me tell you exactly what happened. This would probably be one of the most important videos about your wallet security if you are storing your crypto on MetaMask. So every day I spend a few hours reading industry news or educating myself. And a couple of days ago, I went to PuCoin website. You have probably heard of it. It allows you to check tokens prices, wallet status, liquidity pools, etc. So I connected my MetaMask wallet to this website and discovered that I have a lot of different tokens in my account which I have been unaware of, meaning they were airdropped to me. This wallet has 40 to 50 dollars on the BSC chain and I use it to play around, test new contracts without risking too much money. However, this time my balance that was shown on PuCoin was around $3,500. I knew something was wrong. And most likely one of those tokens is a scam token. In particular, this one. Because its value was shown as $3,400. So I opened the token chart and saw the notification which said an unlocked wallet is holding 100% of this token's liquidity. I checked comments on BSC chain site and of course there was a lot of people saying that this token was a scam. So I thought let's dive deep and check it out. It may be a good topic for the video after all. I grabbed my third cup of coffee that day and began checking the contract. When you open it now you can see plenty of these scam notifications. But back then, there was none. This contract somehow managed to have so many holders. It was airdropped to so many addresses. But I remember that every time you airdrop a token, you would need to pay a gas fee. And even if you send it out in bulk, you can push up to 200 airdrops in one transaction. So I'm really not sure how they could do it. But one thing is certain, they airdropped all those tokens at once. By the way, now the contract's name is marked as a scam. But before this name wasn't shown. Also, another thing which I tried to check was whether the contract was verified. As you might have guessed it, it wasn't. I was sure that this is a scam token, but for some reason that wasn't enough for me. What did I do next? I opened a liquidity pool, chose that token and thought maybe I can exchange it into BNB. It showed one button that said enable token and I pressed it. MetaMask transaction pop-up appeared, asking me to grant permission to allow the following contract to access my funds. I clicked edit permission, changed the amount of this token, got back, closed the pop-up and pressed confirm. Now let's see what happened. Somehow I didn't pay enough attention to gas fees. Maybe I was too tired after three cups of coffee and two long meetings at work. I don't know, but I didn't notice that all my BNB was changed to gas fees. So what I found next was that all my BNB was gone. And it's good thing that I used my test wallet to do this. I can't imagine if I used a storing wallet. And I knew I was tired, I knew it was a scam, but I thought I was clever because I know every flaw on MetaMask. In reality, I was wrong. And that just goes to show that this can happen to pretty much anyone, whether you are just started or someone with years of industry experience. You all remember that guy who lost his CryptoPunks to a phishing attack. I continued to dig into what exactly happened. Apparently, at least 1000 people were scammed by this contract. The most important thing is that after I approved those tokens, they didn't leave any traces in my wallet connections. I couldn't find them. And by the way, if you would like to check whether your wallet has any suspicious approvals, you can always go to chain scan website, press more token approvals. On this page, you would be able to check all your wallet's approvals. If you usually use lots of dApps and interact with smart contracts, you might discover a lot of interesting stuff here. Every transaction needs a smart contract that has access to your wallet in order to spend the tokens you are using. The token allowance is the maximum amount a smart contract has permission to spend from your wallet. An approval means that when users use the apps to transfer tokens, they grant a certain number of token management rights to those contracts or the apps. All the approvals you are seeing, I approved for my wallet. You are shown the contract, 
approved sender, the amount, the token, and the time it was updated. Now, as I'm recording this, I don't have a lot left because I cleaned this list recently, keeping only those I don't consider suspicious. To revoke an approval, you can connect your wallet to Web3. Choose the approval you want to revoke, press revoke button, and approve a transaction. Yes, to revoke an approval, you need to pay gas. Let's remove this USDC approval from a bridge I used before just in case. If you see an app or a DX you used before and you are sure that it is a legitimate one, you can check the exact approval. Probably if you see anything with USDC or USDT token approvals, you will need to revoke it. The process is the same for other networks. If you are on Polygon, on the Polygon Scan website, you can revoke approvals for tokens on that network. One conclusion is that having crypto as asset is good, but whether it's safe depends on you. How you store your crypto and how you use your wallets decides the future of your funds. As you can see, all it takes is one click. One click and the funds might not be there ever again. And this easiness on the surface actually hides a very complex mechanism underneath. One that relies on flaws of our human nature. So I hope my experience can help you to keep your funds safe. As usual, none of the information provided is a financial advice. This was our episode for today. Here is your Bunny Money channel. I'm Vlad. Subscribe for more useful content. See you in the next episode.